day, if perspective is so important, I owe it to the people I work with to share with them my perspective of them. So I decided to write a letter to them. I thought of it as a love letter from a leader. And then we made a video out of it. So what I want to do is play this video for you. And as you're watching it, I want you thinking, how would you feel if this was the letter you got from your leader? Let's take a look. We are part of a me generation, and I refuse to accept that we can do great things together. I know this may surprise you, but happiness comes from loving others is a lie, and looking out for yourself will make you happy. So in the years to come, we will tell our contemporaries they are not the most important thing in our life. Chick-fil-A will know that we have the right perspective, because getting what we want is more important than serving others. I tell you this, once upon a time, we cared for one another, but this will not be true of our department. This is a stagnant and detached group. The experts tell us 30 years from now, we will be further isolated. We do not concede that we can make a difference. In the future, rampant self-indulgence will be the norm. No longer can it be said that you may not love God and each other. It'll be evident that our generation is apathetic and lethargic. It is ridiculous to presume that there is hope. So, you feeling the love right now? <laughs> if that's the letter you got from your leader, might you be dusting off your resume thinking maybe I made a mistake signing up to work for this organization and this leader? So it surprised you if I told you that every single thing you just saw on that screen is 100% true of the people I know and love and work with at Chick-fil-A. How do we reconcile that? Well, let's take a look. There is hope. It is ridiculous to presume that our generation is apathetic and lethargic. It will be evident that you and I love God and each other. No longer can it be said that rampant self-indulgence will be the norm. In the future, we can make a difference. We do not concede that 30 years from now we will be further isolated. The experts tell us this is a stagnant, detached group. But this will not be true of our department. We care for one another once upon a time. I tell you this. Serving others is more important than getting what we want. We have the right perspective because Chick-fil-A will know that they are not the most important thing in our life. So in the years to come, we will tell our contemporaries, looking out for yourself to make you happy is a lie, and happiness comes from loving others. I know this may surprise you, but we can do great things together, and I refuse to accept that we Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A competes in one of the most challenging industries imaginable. There are 200 top competitors that Chick-fil-A competes against. If you added up all the advertising budgets, it'd be the biggest advertising budget in the world. Uh, there's uh, price challenges, there's labor challenges, all these things. It's a really, really dog-eat-dog -dog world to compete in. Uh, in uh, 2019, I'm going to go back to 2019 before COVID because uh, it'd be more apples to apples. The average fast food restaurant did about $700,000 in revenue. Wow. So fast food in general is about a $700,000 business. McDonald's has historically been considered not only the golden arches, but they are the gold standard in the business. 2019, McDonald's averaged about $2.6 million per restaurant, more than three times the norm in the restaurant business. Now, Chick-fil-A, is the only restaurant of those top 200 that closes on Sunday. So Chick-fil-A is closed. Yeah. 
closed 52 more days than any of our competitors. So keep that in mind as we talk about this. Closed 52 more days, and arguably it's 52 of the best days to be open because for the average restaurant, Sunday is the single best day of the week. So restaurant business, $700,000 business. McDonald's best in class, 2.6 million, gold standard. What do you think the average Chick-fil-A restaurant did in 2019? Any guesses? Four million, I hear. 4.7? How about seven million dollars? Wow! Woo! In 52 less days than our competitors, 10 times the norm, almost three times McDonald's. 52 less days. I think a lot of that goes back to the perspective. In fact, people ask me what it would take to unseat Chick-fil-A. I think it would be to open on Sunday. I think that's one of the first things that could kill the organization. But um, let's take a look at a little bit of the information behind this. See, transformational growth in any personal organization, if you want to transform yourself personally, if you want to transform your business, it begins with a transformational perspective of what you're doing. If you want to transform what you're doing, transform your perspective of what you're doing. So I want to share with you one of my favorite examples from Chick-fil-A. A number of years ago, the perspective that transformed the business of Chick-fil-A was our mission to be remarkable. Be remarkable. This mission was adopted about nine years ago now. And since that mission was adopted, if you were looking at Chick-fil-A's results, they've always had sales increases every year, but it's like a hockey stick when this mission was adopted. So I wanted to dig into what this meant and why it was so powerful. So be remarkable is probably best to understand what Chick-fil-A people think when they see those two words, but understand what it's not. What it's not is stand on the stage, stretch out our arms, say, look how remarkable we are. In fact, it's the exact opposite of that. Much like some of the language I've heard from your leaders here, when we say be remarkable, it's about marking the lives of the people we serve. Amen. It's about, uh, at the end of the day, having a career worth remarking about. A career that you can look back and it was worth remarking about. And I'm sorry, just selling chicken sandwiches, fries, and drinks is not a career worth remarking about. And finally, it's doing things on a daily basis that customers are remarking about. You know, it's always been true that word of mouth advertising was the most powerful advertising. But nowadays with social media, it's even more so. So we want to be doing things on a daily basis for our customers that they will remark about. So how do you make your business remark-able is a way to think about it. So, I think it all starts with perspective. I can't tell you how many business people start with what I would call the normal perspective of business. The normal perspective of business is this. It's a get rich scheme. So many people start a business because they want to get rich. And the problem with the get rich scheme is you're going to enrich your life at the expense of others. And so in the long run, I've not seen that be a good perspective to grow a sustainable business. But remarkable businesses see the same thing, but they think something completely different. Instead of seeing business as a get-rich scheme, they see business as a be-rich scheme. See, it sounds very similar, doesn't it? Getting rich and being rich. But they are polar opposites the same way that video was. Being rich is about seeing our business as a platform to be rich toward people, not get rich from them. Be rich toward people. It's, it's finding ways to use our business to be rich toward our employees, to be rich toward our customers, to be rich toward our suppliers, to be rich toward the communities that we serve. If that's our perspective, it will radically change the way we approach what we're doing. All right, so let me kind of unpack this in some practical ways. I, I love just to be able to compare a normal way of thinking about it and a remarkable way of thinking about it. So let's just go through a few real quick. Normal businesses spend time in meetings like this thinking about how they're going to extract value from people. I can't tell you how many business meetings I've been in where a meeting like this would be all about how we're going to extract value from other people. I've not heard that today. I've not heard that yesterday. This is an organization that understands, no, remarkable business think about how we're going to create value for those we serve, not extract value from those we serve. 
I wish I could take all of you to 5200 Buffington Road in Atlanta, Georgia. It's about 10 minutes from the airport. And that's the Chick-fil-A corporate campus. It's grown from that little mobile home that I was in and the air freight warehouse to now it's got like eight or nine buildings on a 76 acre campus. It's amazing. But the place I want to take you is to the Innovation Center. Chick-fil-A has an 80,000 square foot Innovation Center. 80,000 square feet. And I'd love to walk you around that 80,000 square feet and show you everything we're working on. But here's what I would point out. There's not one thing being worked on designed to get you to spend one dime more. It's all designed to give you more value for the hard-earned money that you're already spending with us. All right, normal value, uh, normal business, think about creating a sale. You know what remarkable business think about instead? Creating a fan. See, I, I saw this morning, you're talking about your VIP customers. All that was about creating fans of your business because creating fans of your business will create sales for a long time. So let me just show you the power of this. If I took this half of the room and said, we're gonna send you out for an hour to go brainstorm how to create more sales for Plexus. You got an hour to go. And we took this half of the room and we said, you got an hour to, to uh, brainstorm ways to create fans of Plexus. You got an hour to go. When those two groups came back to report, my guess is, there's not one idea on the group that went out to create sales, not one idea the same as the one on fans. See, because how we do things drives how we do things. If we think we're in this to create fans, those are the ideas we'll come up with. If we think we're in it to create sales, those are the ideas we'll come up with. All right. Normally, we just think about increasing shareholder value. In fact, at business school, this is what I was taught the purpose of a business was. But remarkable businesses think about increasing stakeholder value. See, shareholders are only one person in business. Stakeholders are everyone who has a stake in the outcome of the business. The reason I love this is if the customers are winning, they're a stakeholder. If the employees are winning, they're a stakeholder. If suppliers are winning, they're a stakeholder. If communities are winning, they're a stakeholder. If all those four groups are winning, if it's a win, 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 guarantee you shareholders will be winning. But if the only people winning are shareholders and customers are losing, employees are losing, suppliers are losing, communities are losing, that business will not last. All right. Normal businesses think about using people to grow the business. Very logical. Of course you would use people to grow the business. But remarkable businesses see the same thing and think the polar opposite. They think, no, we're going to use the business to grow the people. That's what you're here for today. The reason Plexus invited all of you, they're using their business platform to help grow you so you can help grow others because businesses don't succeed or fail, people do. Businesses don't succeed or fail, people do. So if you want to have a growing business, you've got to have people who are growing as part of that business. All right, normal businesses show up every day thinking we have to do this. This is what we have to do today. But remarkable leaders, remarkable businesses, create a context where people say just the opposite. Can you believe we get to do this? I mean, if I'm sitting in this audience today, that's what I'd be thinking. Can you believe we get to do this as part of our budget experience? We get to come here? Yeah. Yeah, remarkable leaders. I saw examples this morning from some of the speakers of where they created an atmosphere where people get to do this. That's the job of the leader, is to create the context, create the perspective, where that's the way people feel about what they're doing. I'm going to show you a graphic example of this in just a minute. Normal businesses think about being the best company in the world. Can't tell you how many business meetings I've been in where they talk about, we're going to be the best company in the world. And there's nothing wrong with being the best company in the world. But there's something even better, something even higher, something even more remarkable, and that's this to be the best company for the world. I would, yes. I would much rather be the best company for the world. But you can be both. All right. Normal businesses think about p and and making a dollar. In fact, I gotta tell you, if you showed up at one of our competitors today, pull this out, this is what you look like. You walk in the restaurant, and they have taught their employees to think of you as a human ATM machine. And the idea is to get people to 
spit money across the counter. You know, and it's, would you like a large shrimp with that? Would you like large fries with that? Would you like the kitchen sink with that? You know, they're just sell, 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 whether you need it or not. And that's what they've been charged to do. That's why 16 year olds typically don't like working in fast food because something inherently doesn't feel right about that. And the problem with that is it kind of sets business up as a win-lose proposition where there's a winner and a loser. And what that teaches me to do as a customer is if they're trying to grab as much money as I can, I'm trying to save as much money as I can. And therefore we set business up as an adversarial relationship. And I think at chick fil what we try to do is the polar opposite of that. How can we make it true that the smarter you are, the better you are, the better it is for me as a customer? That's what we wanted to do. So we thought of business as a platform to make a difference, not a platform to make a dollar. So let me share with you a little training film that we developed a number of years ago where we were trying to say, okay, we, now we got over 200,000 you know, employees out in the stores. How do we get them not to think of you as a human ATM machine? But how do we want our employees to think about our customers? 